Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalaran and in today's video I'll be going over all the class changes that are happening in patch 8.3. I'm going to be going over everything that is happening to every class for PvE as well as PvP and how it will affect you in further gameplay. There's a good chance there's going to be last minute changes happening to the patch 8.3 and when Blizzard has other last minute changes I will make a separate video updating this list. But Right now, as it stands, these are the patch changes the Blizzard themselves released that has to do with class changes. So what is happening to all the classes in patch 8.3? We're going to start off with the Death Knight. Blood Death Knight's talent of Mark of Blood is going to have a limit to just how much healing it can provide. Not really a nerf, but more of a cap. Unholy Death Knights are getting more of a change with a couple of their abilities, like Burst and Sword's talent will now increase the absorption of Necrotic Strike, but the base damage of Necrotic Strike is going to be slightly reduced in terms of how much health it can absorb. Ryzen Skulker will also benefit from Path of Frost, I guess the extra ghoul was taking a little bit few too many swims. Also the Ryzen Skulker's Skulker Shot is going to have slightly longer cast time, but slightly more damage, something has to do with the global cooldown of abilities. All these changes should not affect Death Knights in major ways. Demon Hunters are not going to be seeing too many changes, except just a couple bug fixes. So expect for Demon Hunters to be just as good, if not better, than how they were in patch 8.2.5. For Druids we got a couple different changes, and most of them are going to be nerfs. For Balanced Druids we are going to see a nerf to Sunfire and Moonfire periodic damage. However, Azure trait of High Noon is going to have a damage increase and Power of the Moon Azure trait is also going to see a damage increase. So as a balanced druid, if you want to achieve better dot damage, you will have to gear for it. For Feral Druids, Blizzard decided to improve a couple different sounds for their abilities. For Restoration, Mastery has been reduced by 9%. Also High Noon Azure trait, which is a balanced druid Azure trait, which does work with Restoration, has also been reduced by 34%. This is because Restoration Druids, because of the healing over time effect, have a playstyle where they have a lot of empty globals. And they can use those empty globals, particularly in Mythic Plus dungeons, to deal extra damage. This is one of the many reasons why Restoration Druids are super good right now in M+. And this change is mostly to make him not nearly as dominant. But this should not really affect majority of you guys, especially with the gear, if you are planning to raid as a Restoration Druid. However, their dominance in M+, is definitely going to be questioned. As of right now, there's no specific changes happening to Hunters, so if you are playing BM, MM, or Survival, expect for all three of the specs to perform as good, or maybe even better, than how they were in A25. When it comes to mages, the only buff they're really getting is buff damage to Icelands, which sounds like a buff to the spec itself, but it's really to make Icelands an ability worth pressing. As of right now, the damage of Icelands isn't really great at scaling, and right now if you're playing a Frost Mage main, it's probably not of a worth pressing Icelands even as a global. So it's a lot better to just skip over that and just Frostbolt and Glacial Spike. So Blizzard is increasing the damage of Icelands to actually make this ability worth a use. So maybe Frost Mages might become a lot more relevant in this next patch. When it comes to Monks, we got a bunch of changes. Starting with Brewmaster, we're seeing Stamina Bonus reduced to 30% from 35%. Sacred Percentage reduced to 90% of Agility instead of 105%. High Tolerance now increases effectiveness of Stagger by 5% instead of 8. Monks became one of the best tanks when it comes to dealing with all types of damage, and became a very powerful and popular choice for Mythic Pluses. This is another chance to try to dethrone Brewmasters, but also a way for other tanks to be a little bit more competitive. Then we see a variety of massive buffs for Mystery River, but mostly to help the healer be a little bit better at scaling. For example, one of the buffs is to Life Cocoon that now it heals for 60% of the monk's maximum health instead of spell power. There's always been something weird with Mystery Overs in healing. Windwalker is getting a buff for single target by buffing the damage of Rising Sun Kick and Blackout Kick. It's not a massive buff, but like a Frost Mage, Windwalkers basically never use Rising Sun Kick unless it is used to proc another ability, because it's not even worth pressing, which is kind of depressing. Overall, we might see a few more monks, and with the nerf to Brewmaster, maybe Windwalker might take a step in part of the raid roster as a viable DPS.
When it comes to Paladins, the only nerf we are seeing is Paladins Glimmer, which Glimmer of Light as a retreat healing has been reduced by 12% and can only be applied to a maximum of 8 targets. Why? Because Glimmer build is way too good. And when Blizzard introduced the Glimmer as a retreat, every Paladin flocked to it and started making builds out of it. Now, we don't think that this build is going to become bad all of a sudden. I still think you'll want one or two Holy Paladins in every raid, especially if you're pushing high mythics. Paladins are just way too good, and with better gear, this honestly won't really offset them too much. For Priest, we got a lot of updates, but to cut him down short. Yes, my Priest are able to do way too much damage while providing decent healing. So Blizzard wanted to tackle how much damage they do, like how Schism can pair with other abilities and damage and trinkets, and increase how much raw healing they can do with things like dungeons and raw overall output. For Shadow, they are also seeing massive decreases to how much dot damage they can put out, but also slightly reducing how much some of their Azure traits like Chorus of Insanity Critical Strike can give them. Even though this look like heavy handed changes, it seems that Discipline Priest and Shadow Priest will still dominate raid environments. So these are mostly changes to try to account for some of the future fights, but with better gear, I'll still expect for both of those specs to be highly valuable. When it comes to rogues, we're seeing no changes. At least not yet. I'm expecting for rogues to get some unexpected changes, maybe some buffs, maybe some nerfs. And if I had a wish list, I'm hoping that subtlety will become a little bit better of a spec within PvE. When it comes to shamans, there's not a lot of the blizzard who had to adjust. Problem Elemental has got some bugs worked out, and for PvP, shamans light and lasso talent is now being affected by master of the elements. However, to account for this change, for higher bursts, Lasso's base damage has been reduced by 10%. I'm actually surprised we didn't see any Enhancement Shaman buffs, as I was hoping there would be some, but maybe with better gear, Enhancement Shamans will grow into their own. For Warlocks, Affliction is getting some lovin'. First of all, the ability Death Bolt is going to do slightly less damage. However, Nightfall has been redesigned, so it triggers a lot more often and buffs the damage of Shadow Bolt. Also, Drain Soul, which might become the end game talent for Affliction Warlocks, which is a far better option, now does far more damage. This should hopefully make Affliction Warlocks a little bit more consistent outside of just pure single target boss fights, or anywhere where they are powerful at with multi dotting two targets. So, we might see more Affliction Warlocks, maybe in PvP, maybe in Mythic Plus Dungeons. Finally, for Warriors, we're not seeing any notable changes, at least not yet. So, it's a good chance that they'll perform better, if not the same, as they did in patch 825. Now, I want to go over quickly about all the Essence changes happening in A3. Because Essences are, in a sense, going to be what our classes will be playing, and they will reinforce some of the metas, and even allow for different metas, with some of the buffs and nerfs happening. Since this isn't really a class change for Essences, I decided to leave it towards the end of the video, though this information will still be very important. First things first, from Azurite Gear. The trait of Overwhelming Power is going to be a little bit less overwhelming. They're nerfing it by a little bit because of just how much haste it provides, so this might make it a less desirable option for some classes and specs. We're also seeing new essences that are coming into the game, like Spirit of Preservation, Breath of the Dying, and Touch of the Everlasting. It's going to be a good idea to reference some of the new class guides online or in videos in order to find out if these essences are going to have any game-changing mechanics for your classes. The Essence of Condensed Life Force is getting a bit of a nerf. Instead of applying a 5% damage debuff, it's now going to be down to 3. Instead of the Guardian spiking the enemy every 2 seconds, it's going to be every 2.5 seconds. This is to hopefully nerf this essence so it gets rotated out of the meta, even the passive. I mean, nobody wants to start patch 8.3 and then have to do the Eternal Palace to get some of the best essences, so this might be a good change for the better. However, this is going to affect how some of our classes play within the raid environment. Finally, we're seeing some buffs to certain other essences that generally have been out of the meta. Purification Protocol is seeing a damage buff, Unbound Force is seeing a damage buff and a passive increase, Vision of Perfection is going to have a higher proc chance, 
Vitality Conduit should be a little bit easier to decipher within combat text, so it's not really a buff. And World Vein Resonance, the one you get from Islands, is actually, might be, a decent option. Now, a lot of these essences are going to affect different classes and specs in various different ways. So again, it's always a good idea to reference a guide or your favorite video online to find out if any of these essences are going to benefit any of your classes. Of course, on this channel, we'll be doing some of the class guides and I might even cover certain specs that I'm very interested in playing in patch 8.3. Now, again, I probably am going to make an updated video on all the other class changes as soon as they come up, if there's going to be any last minute changes by Blizzard themselves. And we are expecting for the meta to be highly shaken up with a lot of these class changes and essence changes. We don't really know for sure which classes and specs are going to be strong, but it's safe to assume if you know a class or a spec that has been strong for last two patches, it is most likely going to be a viable choice for this patch. However, I always like to take the high road and simply just play a spec that I enjoy playing. A lot of these buffs and nerfs are going to end up adjusting themselves. But with this being a last patch of this expansion, there's a good possibility that every class and every spec of that class might be viable since this is the best scaling that all of us can get. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts about these changes down below and I'll see all of you guys in another video.